Shalom and welcome to Timur's of Torah. This year is entitled Development of Conservative Judaism. I'm certainly no expert in the field at all, but I'd like to make a quote from a few selections in the book by Dr. Walter Ackerman from the conservative movement and in one of the essays. The book is known as Jewish Education Fwat and Other Essays. A tribute to him and some of his articles and people writing about him. So he talks a little bit about the development of conservative Judaism and take some of the main literature from 1922, 1959, and 1978. To me, it's fascinating and personally a bit tragic to see some of the quotes and how they developed over several decades. In 1922, the movement put out the curriculum that's supposed to be taught in their schools, be the afternoon program, the Talmud Torah programs, or in the regular schools. It says the following, this is in 1922. It's in the early years of conservative movement. The goals of Bible instruction in the 1922 curriculum are the following. To impress the children with the belief in the divine origin and the binding authority of the Bible as conceived by the Jewish people. It's making it very clear. The belief they have to inculcate in the children the belief in the divine origin, that's Torah Sinai, and the binding authority of the Bible. That's Torah Sinai and the fact that the Torah is an obligation. Those are the early years. We move ahead, 1959 makes no mention of the divine revelation. This is all in his article, Curricula of the Conservative Congregational School. No mention in 1959 of the divine origin of divine revelation. The biblical canon is presented as a record of the significant experience of the Jewish people and a repository of the religious and ethical aspects of Judaism. The question of the authority of Jewish law is presumably left to the individual school and teacher. So what was so binding in 1922, the divine origin, Torah Sinai, that's left out in 1959. Then it goes on. The accentuation of the moral precepts of the Bible, which characterizes both 2259 curriculum, carefully avoids serious discussion of the source of authority of the moral code. Then it goes on, then it goes on to 1978. The 78 Judaism sources program is clearly based on a problem-solving approach. Rather than presenting the tradition as a set of answers which must be accepted, of course it is the re- revealed Word of God as does the 1922 curriculum. Once again, 22 was, 1922 was clear. It pictures Judaism as a response of human insight to a series of existential problems. It's avoidance of the glorification of the Jewish past and in muting the rogue dimension of biblical post-biblical personalities, the new curriculum differs radically from 1922 and 1959. 78 program ideas of development over time, incorporates the findings of recent psychological research, which challenges earlier views of children's intellectual cap- capacities, and it admits the results of modern biblical scholarship without either the hesitations or caveats of its predecessors. Modern scholarship, of course, is well-housed. Biblical criticism, throwing the Torah out, throwing the divinity of the Torah out. So here you see just a few short years, early years of conservative movement. There's a lot of discussion about halacha, Torah Misenai, a little bit here and there. Solomon Shechter spoke about Minag America, in America, in Israel, in, in Europe, we had a mechitz in Shul. In Europe, in, in America, the Dominican America, we don't. And that opened up the door to a few other things, a few other changes, and modernizing the halacha, and changing the halacha, adapting the halacha. And it wasn't only adapting the halacha, as time went on, basic core beliefs, 1922, inculcate the Torah Sinai. 59 already, not discussing that. 78, Biblical criticism, which just rejected the Torah totally. And it's a slippery slope. Once once you let loose on that binding commitment to halacha and the 13 principles of faith, whatever the intentions, even when someone has the best intentions involved, conserve and somehow 
preserve Judaism, but once you go ahead and abandon what I call the Ogen, the Halacha, we need to have the basics. The basics are our Ogen, the anchor is Halacha, the Shulchan Aruch. We don't tamper with that. And of course, the 13 principles of faith. When we have that intact, there could be arguments, there could be discussions, different philosophical ideas, different approaches, but that's our Ogen, our anchor. Unfortunately, in my opinion, the movement with good intentions and everything lost that anchor and started adjusting things. And things moved very quickly. In one century, the difference, the change from a century ago, to me is tragic, and the amount of assimilation. Because once you're not anchored in, in the 13 Ikara, the 13 principles of faith, and you're not anchored in halacha, it could be a free fall. And of course, it's a tragedy to lose Jews out of the religion. It's a shem. We should always understand that we need our anchor. That anchor is the principles, the Shohan Aruch. And yes, there can be arguments here and there of halachic principles and application specific cases. But just to undo certain halachas that we've had for thousands of years and just modernize, we must proceed with caution with a gadolin who have the whole picture of halacha in front of them can see, oh yeah, this specific halacha the rabbis ready a thousand years ago, two thousand years said that this halacha was based on the reason it doesn't apply, but as a carte blanche rule, we can never do such a thing. And the dangers are obvious. So the next time there's a certain halacha, a takana from Chazal, and we think the reason is this, we don't know if that applies anymore. Be very careful. Halacha is halacha. We must observe it and appreciate it and grow with it. The Mitz Hashem, Mitz Hashem, we should have the clarity among all of our holy brothers to have that commitment to Torah, Misinai, to Halacha. Mitz Hashem, we shall grow together and be together for the next chapter, the Messianic chapter in Jewish history. Shalom.